Hi there, it's me, Megan, again. In this Learn to Monetize More video tutorial, we're going to outline for you some of the best practices in creating DFP ad units. Our main goal in this video installment is to help you form habits that conform to DFP best practices when creating DFP ad units. Let's begin. Once we're in our DFP account, let's first navigate to our Inventory tab. From the left navigation, let's make sure we are on the Add Units page, and then let's click New Add Unit. The first field we come upon is the Code field, which is essentially the unique name we'll give our ad unit. Ad unit codes can be up to 100 characters in length. Only letters, numbers, underscores, hyphens, periods, asterisks, forward slashes, backslashes, exclamations, left angle brackets, colons, and parentheses are allowed. As discussed in several of our past videos, it's important to devise a consistent naming convention for your inventory. This naming convention can be simple or descriptive. You may choose something as simple as slot 1, or something as descriptive as sport, side, ATF, 300 by 600. We often use the latter convention at Monetize More when serving our publishers. A closer look at our example tag reveals our format. Sports is the first element of the tag and defines page or section. Side is the second element of the tag and defines position. ATF is the third element and stands for above the fold. And lastly, 300 by 600 defines the size of the tag. When we arrive at the next field name, you'll find it has been auto-populated to mirror the code you've already chosen. We recommend you leave this as is. Description is an optional field where you can add more information to describe the ad unit. The description field can be especially helpful if you have a large inventory of ad units. We next come upon size. For typical website implementations, we'll want to choose fixed size. The smart banner option only applies to mobile app advertising. If you see the option for video, vast, sizes, this is applicable to video ad units. We'll leave mobile app and video ad units for another discussion at a later time. The next field we arrive at is target window. By choosing top, the ad will open in the current window, while choosing blank opens the ad in a new window. We'll choose blank for this ad unit. That then brings us to placements. Placements are used to create groupings of ads that are packaged in a manner that makes them appealing to advertisers. In this particular case, we have no placements available to us and we'll leave this empty. If you do have placements created, you'd simply click Include for the placement in which you'd want to include the ad unit. You can subsequently exclude those same ad units by clicking on the X next to the ad unit. This next step is quite important if you're trafficking ad exchange through GFP. When you arrive at AdSense Inventory Settings, you'll want to navigate to the Override button. After you click the Override button, a line will appear that says, Maximize revenue of unsold and remnant inventory with AdSense. Next to that is a checked box. Go ahead and uncheck it. This will prevent AdSense from competing with AdExchange for dynamic allocation. In addition, it's important if you have additional third-party ad networks competing in your ad stack. If this box is checked, AdSense will win whether or not it's the highest paying impression. Our next setting is to choose whether or not to enable frequency capping. In order to take advantage of this feature, you must first create labels to which you'll apply the frequency capping parameters. When creating these labels, there are three options. The option relevant to frequency capping is called Add Unit Frequency Cap. Bear in mind, this is an optional setting. Our last setting, which is also optional, is the Refresh Rate option. This is yet another setting applicable only to mobile app advertising. This option is especially useful for apps, such as games, where users stay on the same screen for a long period of time. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our presentation. Also, learn to monetize more by watching our tutorial series and reading our latest ad optimization tips. Please subscribe to our blog to receive periodic updates. Thanks, we'll catch you next time.